Hello. Hello. Good day. My name is Walter, but everyone calls me Chico. Chico. I'm 14 years old and live here in Berlin in the Bahnhof Zoo. Entrance lion's gate, first house on the left. Together with the wretched of this earth, the rhinoceros. And just next to me, two lowland tapirs vegetate. But I want nothing to do with them. They live in groups and can't even blow their noses by themselves. A herd in a rainforest? Who ever heard of such nonsense? I go up and down this way and that way. Now right, now left, to the front, to the back. Do you do any different? I rest, I sleep, I wait. What for? What am I waiting for? What am I waiting for? What are Walter is waiting for? Maybe he's waiting to go and take a dump. I'm a machine that transforms everything. What I get, I transform. Everything I've transformed, I give back again. For myself, I keep nothing. Oh, how modest you are with respect. A, a saint, an asset, a nature machine, a little biogas oven, <laughs> green in, brown out. Brown? So? Oh, the wonder of a wonder, a working wonders of wonderment can only be called a world. Oh, what's wrong with that? Nothing, but sooner or later the machine clangs to a stop and you won't budge. Not if you don't get too clever with it. Hang on a bit. Let's get it straight. You are a circulation pump, or... Even better, a dung generator, or, pardon me, maybe a composting station. Fine, fine, but we humans are somewhat ahead of you there. We are the yeast of the world. We make it rise. We change everything. We dignify. We refine. That is the purpose of our being, our calling in the world. To spruce everything up, to improve, to progress. And you, you sing the song of the world. Let's be honest for a change. You munch your way through the world, but us, we bring it to the boil. So what if things go wrong from time to time? So what if, boom, it all blows up if the lid flies off the pot? That's just the way it is. Even long before we humans crept out of the slime, no need to make a big fuss. Oh, you understand absolutely nothing. What can you expect from a bear tapir? Or whatever they call you. I'm known as a beard tapir. Weight just over 300 kilograms. How exactly beard is to pronounce, I, I don't know. Beard. Uh, I read somewhere it should sound like bard because somewhere, somehow, it seems we were discovered or found by a man called beard or beard or bard or, or whatever. Sometimes it seems as if that man invented us, made us. Oh, but, but we are the biggest and heaviest tapirs in the world and natural loners. And we can be discovered 
from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean, roaming from east to west over mountains reaching heights of 3,000, no, 3,600 meters. We've been wandering the forests for 40 million years. Our favorite food is fruit, which we turn into fresh fertilizer to adorn the paths. Plants and trees sprout in no time from the seeds we sow. They, in their turn, give their fruit to our foraging and planting. And so our descendants are assured a diet of their own. They, in their turn, do as we do, and everything starts from the beginning again. You know, will we think ahead? We think ahead. We conserve our resources. We never take more than we need. We prune and trim. We keep to the beaten track. We are the gardeners of the jungle, or the horticulturists, the care caretakers, the gardeners. It all went well for 14 million years, more or less. There was always enough to eat, our paths grew increasingly efficient, and we became like torpedoes darting through the forests. Zoom. We didn't need good eyesight, it was useless in the gloom of the jungle. We had no use for a long tail, but we could hear a squirrel land lightly on a branch in the highest treetop. And we could smell a jaguar before it was born, and sniff out a fresh piece of fruit even before it was a bud. When we had something to say, we whistle. A little was enough. A little was enough. Much was not worth saying. Most of the world calls us tapirs, uh, but only the Brazilians call us antash, which means no more than idiot. That's what people call us who burn down half of the rainforest and don't seem able to stop. We are the idiots. We are.
Things became really bad when the Janguers discovered how delicious we tasted. They dug their claws in our backs and clamped their fangs on our windpipes. We learned to swim to shake them off. You know, our cats hate water, not us. We love to bathe and to snorkel with our snouts. Then we are also free of the packs of vermin sniffing endlessly around. And fine, sometimes we would bathe in luxury, standing in the water while the little fish gave us a pedicure, and servant birds pecked the annoying parasites from our skin. <sighs> Heavenly. They just pick, pick them off. <laughs> Wonderful. The rainforest is a frightful place, really. Everybody there is always in life-threatening danger, without letter. The same old struggle for survival goes on there as everywhere. Everybody is always spying on everyone else and waiting for the moment to turn you into their lunch. Everyone is waiting to hit the jackpot. Because we are vegetarians and must eat at least 30 kilos a day, yeah, 30 kilos, we are always hungry, always hungry. Night after night after night we are snuffling around for something edible. We can't store anything. Our supermarket is the forest. In a hurry. Well, what for? It looks like you already have everything you need, don't you? Oh, we're not in a hurry to increase our numbers. We take our time. Only one at a time gets to see the light. Of day. And it takes 14 months before we can start our adventure into life. Huh. And you know, look at these stripes. So we cannot be seen in the, in the undergrowth. Is there an advantage to resembling a melon? Um, I think so. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Huh? 
Where, where am I? What, what, what is this I hear? This beautiful little bell. Hmm, a bit wobbly. <laughs> it smells strange. Oh, oh, it's a bell. You also wonder, or you ask yourself, why do we have three toes? We have three toes so we don't slither around like these silly fools you could see sliding about in, in, in Malaysia or some place. <laughs> Well, yes, there actually is a Malaysian tapir, but we bad tapirs don't want anything to do with them. No, thanks. What a stupid kind of a hide is that? They look like, they look like cows. <laughs> spotted, spotted cows. <clears throat> if you don't mind me saying something, they don't look like cows to me. They look more like rather smart police people to me in any case. Supposedly... They're bigger than us, but I don't believe it. They live on the other side of the globe. The air must be heavier there than here. Yet, you have to admit that these Malaysian tapirs aren't dumb. They've convinced the humans there that they come from pigs. And so are impure. Unclean! And the people there aren't allowed to eat pork. So the Malaysian tapir escapes to live another day. To live another day. But it's not going so well for them in spite of that. Their roads and paths have been chopped up, bisected, made impassable. They've been cut off from their natural habitat and have nowhere to go. What are they supposed to do in a vanished forest? Raised to the ground, ruined, everything hacked away? I have it on good authority, there are no more than 2,000 of them left. So now, they've become the sweethearts of all the zoos around the world. And they also live in <laughs> couples. We who are, or have chosen to be solitary,
Ah, uh, well, we have more relatives. The mountain tapirs. They're the smallest of us and they're always freezing. So they grow wool instead of sturdy hide. Wool! Actually, they're not fit for anything more than being pets. But look, this is just so sweet. I must love them. They are shy and timid like all of us, and mostly only dare to move around under cover of darkness, for excellent reason. When you only eat flowers, fresh leaves, fruit and succulent berries, you become just as syrupy and delicious. And not only the jaguars know it, the whole world haggles for our meat. And as bad as that is, they also prize our fat as moisturizer for their shoes. Why wouldn't they also hunt us for our hides? Luckily, we don't have horns, otherwise they'd be dragging us into their bedrooms as Afro Af Af aphrodisiacs. Yeah. Well, we can be pretty big too, when we want. <laughs> we really don't call it the fifth leg for nothing. Then they came, the humans. Then our tracks became footpaths, then dirt roads, then massive tarred highways. Now thousands of us get run down, roadkill for the road killers. That's what they call us when they find us dead on the side of the road, freshly slaughtered for the feast. Road kill. Nobody had to lift a finger. It was just delivered on a platter, barbecued, <laughs> road kill. We were overrun, and had no plan B, like we had with the Jaguars. First, you stole our paths. Then you grab the whole forest, and when there's nothing more to steal, you rob each other. And in the end, you knock each other off. And at last, we'll be rid of you. And you all be gone. Just like them, the, the, the Habsburger. They have the same beautiful long snouts that we do. And today, they have nothing more to say. <laughs> nothing! They've vanished from the face of the earth. No more. Now, I live in Berlin, in 500 square meters between Rhinocery and Lowland. <coughs> Pardon me, uh, pardon me that I push in here so quickly, rudely that is, uh, excuse me Walter for interrupting you. For a long time now I've been listening patiently, but really it seems to me, well, we are still here. Trust me, we humans won't disappear so quickly. People do anything to survive, try to stop them if you want to become history yourself. Excuse me Walter, may I ask you something? But of course. Please go ahead. How many, how many of you tapirs still live in our world? What's your estimate? How many of you are left? Mm, about 5,000 at the most. 
I think. Mainly in Central South America. And actually not counting the Malaysians and the lowlanders. You know how many of us there are currently? Over eight billion. And counting. And you think more is better? You don't believe that's something to take into account? When you started out some 35,000 years ago in some wallow in Africa, you couldn't have been more than about 7,000 half ape half human creatures. And don't forget, we were here for million years before a chance mutation kick started you what do you know today we're a little more half monkey at not. your beginning in that swamp in africa the whole world lay open to you you could go anywhere it didn't matter nothing could stop you from swarming over like walking locusts occupying every nook and cranny what was left for us? Seems there's still a place for you. You're quite well catered for, wouldn't you say? It doesn't look like there's much to complain about here. Oh, is that what I'm doing? In any case, there's always one thing remaining to us. The black hole. The black hole. It's always open for all. Fine, fine. You tapians have existed for 40 million years. That's a small eternity. And have you learnt anything in those 40 million years? Nothing? Absolutely nothing? But what is there to learn? What, what more must we know? We have all the knowledge we need. 40 million years and nothing new learned? Doesn't say much about your intelligence. But who are you? If I may ask, where, where, who do you want to be? In, in any case, no clever human. I have wisdom enough. But you humans, all your vast braininess seems to add up to is destruction. More and more destruction. Everything that comes your way you butcher with the sharpest knives the world has ever seen. What have you not done with your sharp knives to the millions of billions of chickens, pigs, cows and sheep? You have seen to it that they cannot even die out. Because of your cleverness, they have to live forever. Forever! You force all of them to reproduce themselves. You rape them. What for? So you can eat them? But you aren't satisfied. You're never satisfied. It makes no difference how small, how big, whether under the water or above. Everything lands up in your pot. And so that it will taste better and you can swallow it more easily, you can you, you, you turn everything into sausage. But one thing you have not thought of, you are destroying your own time. Soon you will have no more, no more time. Not even that will you have to leave to your children. You will choke in your own greed. <laughs> oh, Walter, calm down. You're terrifying me. Take a deep breath. You're just repeating the same old nonsense that those philosophers of old used to spout. Only when the last tree has fallen will you discover that you can't eat money. It's all nonsense. Just look around you. Money can still buy you anything, even more than before. There's more money going around than people can spend. And there's more than enough to feed eight billion people if we want it. But naturally, those who have the say don't want that. Everybody can't be satisfied. They can't be business. They can't be profit if everyone is satisfied. People are lazy and lie around doing nothing. 
please don't get me wrong, but what you are speaking is the language of the underdog, the litany of the loser. I'm sorry, Walter. It's a little bit nasty of me. I'm don't, don't, don't be afraid to say what you think. Do what you like, however you like to do it. You do what you will in any case, because you can. Everything that can be done gets done. No, Walter. I like you very much, but your talk of the end of the world, your prophetic trumpeting, really gets my goat. Just look around you, okay? You can't see too much from here, but you know what I mean. Everyone can see how good things are in this place. Nobody has to starve or freeze, least of all you. And globally, less and less people are going hungry, and more are living longer. Or has nobody ever pointed this out to you? Look at it this way. We all want the same. We are all life that wants to live amid life that wants to live. We do it in double time while you, you shamble along in slow motion. Is there really a difference? You are reckless. While we are considerate. That's the difference. Bravo to you, Walter. What a philosopher. Hats off, gentlemen. I'm a tape here. Of course. And that's why we treasure you. Your name is Walter, but everyone calls you Chico. You live in Berlin, entrance Lionsgate, first house on the left, our prophet. Who wants to be a prophet? I'll tell you who we humans really are. Not just my opinion, but on good authority. On whose authority, then? A philosopher in the Black Forest. Not Heidegger, by any chance. I've heard of him. You know I'm not a complete idiot. Yet. No, no, he's called Kongong, and he lives in Urbag in the Black Forest. Urbag? Old mountain? There must have been mountain tapirs there at one time. I haven't a clue. Today it's called Duxburg. I see. And what did Kongong have to say? Kongong said that people are egotistical, reckless, and emotional. You are who you are. I am who I am. Here on public display. From 9 a.m. in the morning to 17 hours 30 in the evening. One hour longer in summer. And no one can be mistaken about where I am. My living area is 500 square meters here in Berlin. Between Rhinocery and Lowlanders. I have access to a heated room which must be kept at a constant 24 degrees Celsius. So I don't kick the bucket and deprive the zoo of a precious exhibit. Please, Walter. As you have in the meantime come to learn, my dear friends, I have to live next to two lowland tapirs, although we have absolutely no interest in one another. I'm alone, gladly, and I love to wander through forests, completely unlike my neighbor, Debbie, Debbie, who craves company. She actually made it into a doctoral thesis where some doctor or other wanted to prove that Tapirs have no real feelings, only instincts, or something like that. But it was complete and utter rubbish. When Debbie was young, she was in love, really in love, with another lowlander. But, but, but he died all too soon. It was a huge tragedy for Debbie. She grew sadder and sad, didn't eat, couldn't sleep, only mooned about miserably in her gloomy corner. Then one of the zookeepers had the bright idea of putting a television set before her. Oh, all his colleagues advised him against it, they warned him. The grieving widow couldn't see anything anyway. After all, like all tapirs, she's half-blind and, you know, uh, seriously stupid. 
stupid. I don't like that word. Stupid. It's arrogant. Anyone who uses it must prove to me he or she knows better than I do. But the tapir whisperer wouldn't let himself be dissuaded. He played Debbie beautiful videos of lowland tapirs. And Debbie watched attentively. Almost immediately she became totally captivated and couldn't stop watching. She got extremely annoyed when the video ended, so he showed it to her in a continuous loop, in one continuous loop. And she snapped out of her depression. Now she's in love with Pablo. The two are quite inseparable. It can happen so quickly, you know. Who understands love after all? But they don't have any children. I don't know if they want any. Poor, well, I've seen them on the job. So one can imagine they want certain things. Well, all's well that ends well, Walter. Berlin, when I was still stuck in the elephant house, cage, completely alone. And for the curious, I'll tell a little more about my family. I was born in Germany, in, in, in Wuppertal. Huh. Born in Wuppertal. Star sign, apocalypse. Yes, star sign. Born in Wuppertal. Wuppertal on the Wupper. My parents were from America. My mother is bigger than me, like all the females of our species. And here you see my father, J J Jasper. He's put it all behind him now. Seven years ago, he had to be put to sleep. Good night, Jasper. Sleep tight, sweet dream. Tiddly doo, doodly doo. And this is my great uncle Jonathan. In 1965, he was an extra in Stanley Kubrick's 2001 Space Odyssey. In the seventh minute, he was clubbed to death with a large bone, hmm, very large bone, by a half-ape. His glorious debut in the glamorous world of the cinema. I have another sister in Cottbus, Bonita. We don't know each other. She has to live with my uncle, Molly, and she doesn't have any children. We four are the last bear tapir. After us, we will have vanished from your continent for good. Forever gone. By the way, Relatives of ours could also be found once uh, on the Rhine, at Freiburg, in Breisgau, for example. When we're gone, how long will you still remain? 
Will your end be as inconspicuous as ours? Peaceful, without song and dance? No, <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> uh, definitely not, Walter. We will assuredly not go gently into that good night. You mean there will be a, a huge explosion? There will be ear-shattering explosions. But today is today. And what is tomorrow? Tomorrow is tomorrow. And now it is always now. Mm. Always now. My dear Walter, we are all very fond of you. You set a great example for us humans, especially for the young, with your one-child-only policy, your fruitarian lifestyle, your saintly gentleness. But? Yes, but what about those who want more than merely pleasant pipings in the jungle, who want to get out of there, experience more than an endless diet of fruit and gardening the leaves? Others more clever than you, after more than 40 million years only tending and mending, it's not enough. There are winners and there are losers. I'm sorry to say, Walty, but you're one of the losers. <gasps> but in spite of all that, it doesn't mean we don't like you. But can you tell me, where have the oryx gone? Where are the saber-toothed tigers? Where are the mammoths? The dodo? Where are the gods? Where now does Jesus collect his sad sinners to take to heaven? Gone! All gone! All vanished! Nothing left but wisps of imagination. We must all go back to the nothing from which we came. Everything dissolves, evaporates, disappears. In spite of that, I can promise you one thing. Others will come. Species after species come waddling into existence, intent on clambering aboard the gravy train of survival. And some will succeed. It's clean up or clear out. That's the law of change. Nobody can stop the express train of time. Nobody? Really? No one can hold up time. It's not like a watch that you can let run down. Perhaps. We can somehow see to it that it passes more slowly. The time, I mean. Mm, my dear creature, what is gone is gone. Ever comes back. Well, thank you so much, you wonderful humans. Thank you that you have so thoroughly cleaned up. Now that you have so successfully chopped and scraped so much away, you can focus your attention on what has most interested you from the start. What would that be then? Yourselves, of course. Except you no longer have much time for that. You've wasted most of it, and now it's goodbye to the good times. Ah, who cares what's coming? This planet is on death row anyway. Whether we freeze, drown, or burn. Whether a red giant or a white dwarf delivers the coup de grace. Doesn't matter, does it? One way or another, we'll do whether an asteroid shatters us or a virus makes us vomit ourselves to death or we turn our sky into deadly poison, it's all the same. I must, I must say, I find you quite arrogant, Walter. We feed you, keep you warm. I didn't ask you to kidnap my forefathers and lock me up here, uh, did I? Well, tell me, would, would you like us to pack you into a crate and send you back to the rainforest? After three days, you'd be starving or even worse, butchered for your meat. Or flattened by a truck transporting timber. I mean, the way I see it, we're not treating you so badly here, are we? However you want to see it. Forgive me, uh, Walter, but I have maybe a silly question. Oh, go ahead. You're so famous, primeval forest, always screeching and raining. Doesn't it sometimes bore you? What do you mean, bore? I mean, uh, gorging yourself from morning to night in order to rest. Isn't that a little bit simple? That's how life is. Simple. Surely there's more to it. Every plant wants to climb from the shadows into the light of the sun. And so, you mean, because we have lost everything to you, our homes, our future, we lose us, must slink off and die? Oh, no, no. No one's talking about dying. Don't you have easy asylum here? Doesn't everyone? Thank you. We must all make concessions. Even us. It's... It's not decided yet who is to go and who is to stay. Indeed. Which of us two? For oh, pity's sake, look at that. Can't even eat an apple properly. They keep on falling out of his mouth. But, but, why are you always insulting me? You hurt, you humiliate us, Tapirs. We who have done nothing to you that I know of. Why keep 
on ridiculing us. What, why? Why? Because you are funny. Just the way you stand and walk so awkwardly and helplessly, we find it hilarious. Walter, I have nothing but affection for you. So now, go ahead. Chomp your charity apples and dump your steaming heaps of dung all over our beautiful zoo and everyone will be happy. You are a man without a conscience, without a future, a faceless anonymity with nothing more to dream. It has already begun. What has begun? You are already deeply in it, only it's not a nightmare, it's reality. Here he goes again, the fuming prophet. Who are you, after all, to be preaching to us from dawn to dusk that the writing has been sprayed on the wall? I'm just a dreamer, dreaming of being a tapir, a tapir. At least I can still dream. I'm going to leave you now, lie down outside, dream. That I can still manage, quite successfully. I dream. I dream. Ah, well, maybe this over-delicate soul has relocated his brain to his rear. Seems like it simply saunters off in a huff to stretch out in the sun and snooze. But let's make no bones about it. This creature has an all-inclusive full pension. Does our dear Walter even have a clue as to how much he costs us? What a normal person who wants to get into the zoo has to pay just to catch a glimpse of him? Well, it's true, I have a season ticket. It's a good deal. But other people? They have to fork out 15 euros per person at a time. That's a lot of money. It could keep an army of Walters stuffed full in the forest every day. We often dream. We like to dream. A lot. I dreamed we tapirs were gigantic. Occupied by myriad colonies of bacteria and viruses. Then a sleepwalking crocodile that kicked out its evolution. Then a rat the size of an elephant mutated after an accident in a nuclear reactor. Indeed, we had 40 million years to carry this apparently very important mission to a triumphant victory. For millions of years, not only the Jaguar, but these microscopic warriors, bacteria, viruses, have waged brutal wars of annihilation against us. I don't know what's going to happen. There's nothing I can do except dream. Wait calmly for nothing. I am what I am. But this doesn't seem to be a dream. It looks like my house is going to be torn down and replaced with a luxury pagoda. This year already the bulldozers will arrive. Then it's going to get loud. What, what about me? Will I be gentrified? Will I be sold to the French? They'll no doubt make some tasty pastry out of me. Tapir de luxe à la France. Oh well, what can one do? Taking a dump? Has never been a crime. What's up, Walty? Dreamed out? Shaken from your own nightmare? Look to the ant. O oh, thou sluggard, scurry and hurry and build your own world. Make something of yourself for a change. Like the ants? You yourself live in a civil state more like an ant heap than anything else. 
You live in little boxes, sell your services for the highest price, bow nervously to the boss and the customer. Yes, sir, no, ma'am, at your service, ma'am. Left, right, left, right, quick, march. Whoever you are, scurry off to do anything your queen commands you to do. What's her name, then, oh, this queen? Money, money, money. For that, you will jump headfirst into any war, whatever the consequences. And you advise us to build our own world. How will that work? We have only one world and one history, however big an idiot or drop out of evolution you take me for. And this history of mine is mine. I have no other. Is, is yours so much better? Is yours perhaps more beautiful? Tell me. With pleasure. But in our story, things happen. Real action. An uninhibited orgy with the full orchestra. The rumble and boom of ultimate suspense. The real deal. That's history. You love wrecking everything. Oh, well, so what? Afterwards, we build it all up again and better. Something completely different from your endless piping, peeping, chattering and cheeping in the jungle. I mean, I'm not trying to insult you. But, but, but you are, the whole time. This is how it sounds in your forest. With us, things happen. There's industry, action. Walter? Walter? You haven't been crushed by a falling tree, have you? Walter? No, never mind me. I, I'm, I'm just taking a little rest to catch my breath. Just a little rest. Tell me, you, you are not perhaps one of those self-made men? One of those fans of the master race? Or you hang out with people like that? Oh, no. I'm no fan of them at all. But the only one here belittling his fellows is the one promoting himself as something better and claiming to be the biggest and the strongest. He wants nothing to do with the other kinds of tapir, thank you very much. They mince around, swaddled in wool, are small and weak. Others have unsightly spots and make pigs of themselves. Hmm. Seems he's wobbled off like a little child. Can't take too much of his own medicine. He'd better learn to handle criticism. Who can't take the heat and runs away, loses, or becomes extinct? Well, perhaps it is a bit too much for him. inspiring the history of the tape here. They are 40 million years behind them and us, 300,000 or so. Still, when you think about it, it must have been terrible for them in that rainforest. I mean, I, I, I'm starting to feel sorry for him. The poor little tug. Something's not right. I'd better go and take a look. I feel a bit guilty, actually. Oh, it's not far. Luckily, I have a season ticket. I'll go and see him. I'll be there in ten minutes. Oh, it's gotten chilly. I'm nearly freezing. I mustn't forget my hat. And remember not to forget it anyway. People are always forgetting their hats. That's why many don't wear one, I guess. It's my philosophy. We 
kind to those less fortunate than you. It can happen without warning that you find yourself in the same boat. It can go badly for you unexpectedly and you'll be the one sitting there craving a little kindness, a little human empathy. What's going on? It used to be so green and now suddenly it's, it's completely bare. Summer must be past. It's, it's gotten so cold and barren and it's also certain our dear Walter isn't here. But the lowlanders are still around. As, as always, they huddle together under their sunroof and stay into the distance, dreaming of television. He's also not here. Walter? Where could he have gone? Done a runner, evaporated into the past. He always wanted to go back there into the past. Why didn't he just stay there? That's where he belongs. The old fossil, my god, this cow with three toes and five legs. Hi, have you seen old buddy the tapir? He, he's definitely not here now. Come on, let's get out of here. It's stuffy as a tomb, as suffocating as ancient history. Man, oh man, now we have to pass these rhinos in their lumbering leather. Just another gang of losers. Such a waste of space. I mean, who wants to see stuff like this? Kids? They have sotted with dinosaurs and that kind of junk. What use do they have? I mean, uh, what is this place? A museum? A museum for mistakes? Monsters? Dead ends? Do you, do you get it? I don't. As far as I'm concerned, they can tear this massive pigsty down and build a decent hotel. A that pagoda is not such a bad idea. Come on, uh, let's go. These, they, they are only zombies around here. This is it. Beautiful feathers, no brains, also going extinct. Glorious death, that's all I can say. Come on, let's get out of here. Everything is horrible, terrifying, and the racket. This is how it sounds in the rainforest. How can he stand it in this cage? And the stink. <laughs> And here, the bad luck bird of the millenniums. You can only gasp, unable to fly. And these are carpi? No, neck giraffes. Another bad genetic joke. They couldn't even work out how to grow a proper neck. I've often seen you here. Yeah, of course, I have a season ticket and I make the most of it. It's ten times cheaper than a daily. And because the ticket is so cheap, you're allowed to ridicule the animals here? Ah, uh, come on. People think something cheap can't be good, otherwise it couldn't be so cheap. They always assume somehow there's a better option. When it's more expensive, they think it's better and they complain less. Sometimes you don't know what something is made of and it's best to shut up. To avoid ridicule because you don't know the real value. You know what I'm saying? For example, uh, your people get hospitalized for free. They also get fed for free. So how do the dear patients respond? They moan and groan about the food. It's astonishing, but that's how we are. We are just never satisfied. Never satisfied. It's quite ridiculous, really, but I'm the same. So you come here to insult and demean the animals because it costs you so little? My dear man, I'm an enlightened person and make my observations, you know, on, on that basis. There are lessons to be learned from the animals. Hmm, and what precisely? It's like everything sinks away slowly over the horizon like a sunset, but it never wants to end. If I may express myself in such, such sophisticated terms, we should keep it to ourselves. Do you have a phone? Of course I have one. Just don't have it with me. Left it lying somewhere. It's out everywhere. Tapir disappeared. Oh. What? What's that? Show me. Breaking news. What's that supposed to mean?
breaking news. Air Tapir vanished from Berlin Zoo. Over 400,000 damages. Rare Tapir vanished. Died? Three star cook warns that tapirs are delicacies in Asia. Is the zoo being blackmailed? A rare tapir worth over a million on the black market? Here's a thing. 400,000. If not more. 400,000 for a fossil? And not even extinct yet? There's still 5,000 of them, he said. 5,000? Come, uh, let's go have a drink. It's on me. I wonder, maybe I could get a reward, some sort of finder's fee. I know the old con artist Chico, after all, even if he's called Walter. You know what? I keep asking myself, what, what would have happened if our species hadn't followed such an insane path? Then this wouldn't be here. Nothing gives nothing. Mm -hmm. Some kind of marsh, maybe? A pond? Or a pool? Maybe, but, I mean, where would the tapir be today without us? If they've always been here, they would still be here, don't you think? Obviously, but without us, they'd have to take care of their own food. There are no jaguars here, that's a plus, but I wonder, would they have been better off without us? Don't ask me, ask the almighty God who apparently created everything. Pity we can't ask him. You think he might have a good explanation? Please, stop asking questions that can't be answered. Sorry. <sighs> but these stupid tapers already make one think. He, he sent us something. Walter? Walter sent something? I had a good landing in the past. I'm safe now. That can't be. Where is he then? On Noah's Ark. Noah? Who the hell is Noah? Uh, some sort of a sea captain, it seems. Uh, Noah? A captain? A captain, you say? On a luxury liner? What do I know? Maybe a refugee tramp steamer. Don't worry, I'm all right. I found some new friends, a dodo, an aurochs. I'm expecting a visit from a saber-toothed tiger at any moment. <laughs> Unfortunately, some Malaysian and, oh, lovely them, bull tapirs have also shown up. It seems one can't always choose one's companions. That sounds just like Walter. I swear, he's not from this planet. So I believe the flood is coming. I'm, I'm pretty certain it's coming. Walter really is a prophet. Okay, cheers to our prophet. So tell me this, how can he send you that message? He doesn't know you. How could he know that we are here? Perhaps he is trying to reveal something to you. First comes the revelation. Then the apocalypse. Cheers to Walter, our old friend and comrade. So now I've just have one more stupid question. You aren't by any chance also called Walter? You see, ah, it doesn't matter now. Hang on, I'll get us another drink. What? Can this be possible? Now, he's gone? Also? What is going on? <sighs> God, I'm done. I'm done with the world. I've had enough of these creatures. Originally, the tapirs were the horticulturists, the, the, the gardeners, the, the caretakers of the jungle. I won't argue with that, but today, today they are a, a kind of messenger. That's it. 
they? Messengers. Messengers. Messengers without an audience, like letters to the dead. This, like this place is also a kind of defunct post office. Sorry, old boy, but uh, that's how it is. No one is interested in getting their mail anymore, although you keep sending it. Yes, or maybe the Tuppy is a kind of angel, uh, an angel no one understands anymore. Could be that, could mean that. Angels no one can understand who have lost their wings. Angels who can't fly. Like that bedraggled Casimir bird uh, in the zoo. First, bad luck with evolution, then the good luck to no longer have to dodge and flap before the claws of this world. What kind of fate is that? Is it that good news? Is that the message on the way? Will it get through? deluge. Those with nothing accuse those who have much and threaten them with a flood in order to convince those with much to help those with too little so the flood won't come. Or maybe it is coming but, but not so soon. No one knows when or if it will happen. At least none of us know but still everything changes, moves on except Walter. Only the tapirs don't. They stay true to themselves, remain as they are. It's rather admirable, yet they're going extinct. Can I honestly say that's a bad solution? Wonder how he's doing on his ark. He must be as hungry as a whale. I mean, uh, I mean, when these animals go looking for food, the vegetarians and fruitarians aren't going to have anything fresh to feed on for long. And the carnivores, the, the, the predators, and Walter, Walty. A tapir like him needs at least 30 kilograms of fresh food per day. And the rhinoceros, what about him? He weighs at least 10 times more than Walter. They'll all be jostling about on that overcrowded ark, dropping piles of hot dung with food rapidly running out. The next catastrophe is doubtless already on the way. They all hurl themselves on each other and tear one another to shreds. That will be a true massacre of the innocents. Bon appétit. Cheers, Noah, you most miserable of all captains. There is, however, one thing I've learned from the Tapirs. When they die, their enemies soon follow. If Walter goes, his arch enemy, the Jaguar, must also go. They are dependent on each other. It's some consolation that after all the gore and agony on our planet, the day will come when there are no combatants left. All will be gone. Not bad, I think. I mean, what difference does it make to you whether you die now or everyone dies? It's the same in the end, with offspring or new generations. The inevitable final curtain is just delayed a little longer. Delayed? Just a little longer. So, 
this morning. I'm surfing around and once again can't decide where to go on holiday. Don't want to be accused of not caring about the environment. Could uh, just as well stay here. I don't, I don't have to go anywhere. And when I look at this, definitely not. For Pete's sake. Look at that. No, 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 no. It's not that the world is bad. It's too full. I mean, I mean, there's not enough room for everyone. Not so long ago, people were raucously singing all or nothing, nobody or everyone. But today it is, there's not enough for everyone. But nobody sings this. Well, oh, oh I can't flip around. There he is! Again! As if he were never gone. Hello. Good day. Well... Uh, Walty, is, is, is that you? What are you? Uh, just dropping by, see what's going on around here. So, you're still lying around dozing in the sun, are you? Is there a uh, sun there where you are? We, we don't need a sun here. Ah, oh, Walter, everyone needs the sun. Aren't you a little bored with paradise? Crackling of leaves falling, wind whistling in your ears, world becoming music. Even the farting of a rhino blending in the singing. Well, I'm no poet, for sure. Don't need any of that. No poems, no drama, no clowns. We have everything we need. And nobody needs to work there? Everything is free? When we aren't Greedy, he is. He's barely back on screen when he works me up again with his damn simplicity, his maddening gentleness. Anger and envy only arise when someone wants too much. I've told you over and over, it's greed. Greed that makes the world go round. Sorry to disappoint you, but it's the sun. The sun is the motto of everything. Come on, Walter, you know it's all bullshit. Hogwash multiplied to the power of a thousand squared. Let's face it, I'm telling you, you don't have to get excited. It's not my idea. Everything issues from the cosmic inferno. That's the only way that the new can arise. That's the way it is. And the sparks of the blaze glow in each one of us, even in you. The flames of annihilation. The universe is a gigantic oven. A crematorium, I have realized that for myself. But I doubt that a bleeding heart such as you could get that. I don't want to get something like that, to be quite Man honest. Man is an adventurer, a discoverer, a hero, rolling the world forward, ever forward. So you want to see the world burning? You mean world destroyer? We, on the other hand, are caught. Tented, satisfied by that which is, which exists now. Why ask for more, when there is already an abundance? When a leaf falls, or a snowflake, you can hear the song of the world, which is never silent. Then you are willing, and listen, you can feel something. It's the wind, the perfume, the rippling shimmer of the universe that brings out the melody and hushes the babble. Just be silent so, and listen. So, uh, Walter, tell me truthfully, would, would you genuinely not be afraid were everything to become dark and silent? No, not, not at all. But you? You are afraid. Afraid of losing something that never belonged to you in the first place. You are a wave that knows nothing of the ocean that gave rise to it. And so are afraid to sink back down or break on the shore. Uh, interesting. 
I think you say we, we needn't be afraid of anything or a anyone? That is so. Fear and anxiety were once useful, even important for survival, but now you've moved on. You should know better after 300,000 years. And what do you know after your 40 million years? I know what happiness is. Happiness is what succeeds the disappearance of space and time. The present is the meeting place of the future and the past. So, right now, in this moment, there is nothing. But why? If the present is all that there is, why is there something? Why? You, you're not listening to me anymore? Hello? Hello? A good man? Where have you gone? I'm on my way. On your way where? To say goodbye. I'm going to say goodbye. Goodbye? To what? Have we all suddenly fallen into the void? And... and... didn't notice? Um, uh, maybe I'm not a day peer after all, but merely a philosopher. One with too many senseless questions. Or simply, hopelessly, a person who thinks too much. Merely a faint echo of ages past, past, past. A reverberation of primordial days. And still as solitary as those days in the elephant house. Alone, alone, I'm alone. Alone in an elephant house. I am so small, yet my sight is clear. In peace I dwell here without fear. in the past. Could it be better over there? Better for him? But for us? For us?
是寂寞的录音带，窗外的光线被玻璃过滤成空白。这路。